What's going on, everyone? This is your neighborhood chef, Chef Prime. Uh, today's topic is how AI and automation are taking over. Um, look, we already know we've been in a time of technology and for so long, uh, a lot of companies across the board has been looking at better ways of reducing labor cost and increasing productivity. And one of the major impacts is by people's jobs. And one thing you have to look at, especially in the hospitality industry, is the fact that, you know, with uh, these groups of people doing these this whole display of, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go into <laughs> I don't want y'all to hate my guts, but you got these group of people that are are trying to champion the way that they get paid and saying, look, you know, I'm working at these fast food places. Um, we we want benefits, we want higher pay, we want this and that. And you know, the so the the company's answers is is pretty much look, if we increase your labor wage um and give you benefits that's gonna cost more from uh, the company, then we're just going to find better ways to still arrive to what we already do, but at a, again, a much reduced rate. Uh, uh, you know, companies only think bottom line. People think for themselves. It's always going to be a clash system. So what a lot of these fast food companies do, they adopt the automation. Uh, so, you know, McDonald's was one of the pioneers because they're a multi-billion dollar brand. So what they did was instead of having so many cashiers uh, in the front taking in orders, they had those screens that you could just push in yourself and and without the help of a cashier that slowly reduced the, the manpower needed to be at the cashier ringing in those orders. And then they looked at other things from their manufacturing facilities. And I'm talking about these big box, um, you know, global franchise brands. They look at their, uh, what can we do to reduce costs in our warehouse facilities? You know, we need to move all of these foods from the warehouse facility to the these restaurants at the global scale. And then they started to look at logistics and look, uh, machines started to come into play. Software was being created. And then this is the uh, the problem. So let's let's go into um, how this thing really impacts, you know, the, the grocery stores, drive through lanes and, and overall, you know, uh, everybody. From apps for fast food and food delivery to self-checkout and self-service kiosks, your favorite grocery stores and fast food chains are changing fast. Popular franchises like McDonald's. So do y'all see that? I, like I just said, the kiosks, fast food, like everything is, is quicker now. I'm telling y'all, man, this is, this is going to be ugly. Plan to invest $2 billion into bringing AI and robots into stores and drive throughs in 2024. In 2022, American grocery stores spent $13 billion on tech automations. The Food Industry Association expects spending on things like smart carts and revamped self-checkout aisles to grow 400% through 2025. Automation is playing a bigger role in fast food, and it will play a bigger role still. The problem is with minimum wage hikes in places like California, with other cost pressures still coming through, it's very expensive now to run a fast food business. And whilst fast food retailers have tried to remedy that by passing on prices to customers, customers of course don't like that and volumes go down. Americans are spending an average of $475 a month on growth. Look, even even right there, and that went, I, did, I wasn't expecting this to, to arrive to my point, you know, within the first minute of the video, but look, a lot of these restaurants, y'all should already know, uh, you're talking about razor thin margins. Now, with the, the, the height of inflation, food cost, you know, uh, everything is up. And then on top of that, you got people, adults working in these fast food places. And they're like, yo, we need a livable wage. We cannot live and, or survive off of minimum wage that you're giving us right now. You got to be careful of what you ask for. That's the only thing I'm going to say. Be careful of what you ask for.
groceries. Over the last decade, menu prices at most major fast food restaurants have outpaced national inflation rates, according to research from Finance Buzz. Popular fast food items like McDonald's McChicken and McDouble, Popeye's mashed potatoes and gravy, Taco Bell's Chalupa Supreme, and Wendy's Small Frosty have all doubled in price since 2014. Executives on earning calls have taken notice of the high prices and have noted their growth in tech as a way to drive down prices and remain profitable. If we're doing a good job on the items and prices and the service we provide, saving them money with pickup and delivery, for example, we can continue to grow share. So there is a such thing as called like a transfer of fees. So as a food operator, if I am serving you food, uh, I've already got my pre projections already set. This is how much it costs to make the sandwich or the meal. And then, you know, by the meal sold, this is my pre projected profits um, off of each meal. So when you have these uh, economical changes that happens that drive up the food cost again, um, and then, you know, you look at uh, everything going up. So the, the cost of uh, utilities, uh, workers' wages are going up, um, the, the cost of insurance has been going up. Everything that you look at when it comes to the, the the operations of the business, costs are going up. So naturally, if the restaurant wish to, to continue to make a profit per meal sold, they got to take those projected increases and then factor the new cost in the meal that's going to drive the cost of that meal up. It's a transference of fees. And every business does this, unfortunately. So we're, we're merchants at the core and we've added through the technological changes that we've made and the service changes that we've made a dimension to the business that's driving that growth. We're also investing for long term growth in areas like digital and technology, as well as our transformation efforts within our global business services organization. By leveraging the full strength of our global scale, we'll build new and modern capabilities and ultimately unlock speed and innovation for our entire McDonald's system. The American consumer is starting to pull back on spending and rising food and labor costs are causing the food industry to invest more into automation to lower labor costs and improve sales in order to stay competitive and take advantage of shifting consumer tastes. So the main reason why from a consumer perspective, people have scaled back with buying you know, uh, fast foods is because honestly, people are saying, look, it it is more cost effective for me to just go to the grocery store and, you know, bulk, buy in bulk, and then just kind of like meal plan the way out, uh, opposed to going to the restaurant because it was much more affordable uh, pre-COVID um, to, you know, enjoy a meal. Um, people are looking at ways of reducing their cost because, again, from a consumer level, the cost of living um, has skyrocketed, and especially if you live in a major city. So people are looking at ways that they can save, how they can scale back. Now, the average restaurant has put themselves in a position where it is actually looked upon like a luxury uh, opposed to, you know, hey, I could just blow, you know, 15 or $10 on a meal and don't even think about it. Now it's 15, $20 a meal. And now you want to think about that. Grocery stores. <laughs> Let's go. So the only way to square this circle really is to try and reduce costs. And that means automation. So we will see many more ordering kiosks. We'll see the use of AI at drive throughs We'll see other areas of the business, including supply chains, become increasingly automated, all with a view of taking out the labor cost. Despite some grocery stores rolling back on self-checkout automation earlier in 2024, the same companies are now rolling out smart carts. Amazon is now selling grocers its Dash Carts, and this is a smart cart by Caper Carts, which Instacart acquired in 2021. The carts are in large chains like Kroger and ShopRite. Now, look, this technology, I, I ain't going to hold y'all. We 
I have one of those Amazon grocery stores right around the corner from where I'm currently living. Look, that cart that they showing right now, that cart is crazy. I've been in the store. I've seen that cart and how you could put stuff in there and then walk out the, the store and then the, the cart charges you. Like it's, it's crazy the way that technology and new software has been implemented within uh the standard ways of us just you know uh living day to day uh kudos to amazon for creating something like that and then on top of that you're also going to see a sky rocket rise of uh the self-checkout owls um all the major stores that can afford to have a self-checkout owl is doing it because it, again it reduces you know, the uh, the wages, the workers uh, that needed to be there to, you know, process and, and um, check out people's food is, it's, again, you know, I, I have to keep saying you get what you ask for. What's powerful about Caper is all the sensors on the device. So there's the camera sensors that look at the basket. There's the weights and measure certified sensor. And then there's the location sensor. And so what retailers are excited about is leveraging those sensors to make sure that they know exactly what's inside the shopping cart. And so, for example, even if somebody were to hide an item, for example, and put it into the cart, we know with certainty that with the weights and measures scale, that something went into the cart. Instacart also says the carts help customers stay within their grocery budgets. By having the running total, they're able to ensure that they stay on budget. There's no apprehension that when you get to the checkout line, you're over budget and you have to have to put things back. We're also seeing that customers really love the deals, the coupon clipping uh, capabilities on the cart. And that's just the tip of the. Now, can you imagine? I have to hit that pause button. Can you imagine in every grocery store a full rollout of this type of technology? They already created this thing now. We just need all the grocery stores to be able to afford that level of technology. But on a full rollout, I'm talking about there will be no need for anybody to be a cashier in front of these grocery stores with that level of technology. We're going to need the people in the back. You know, yeah, we're going to need you to go back there in 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 a, um in a freezer in a in a walk. You know. The walkthrough, like we're going to need you in the back, you know, uh, taking in delivery, going out to the front, stocking the shelves. But after that, we don't need you. So it's going to scale back. This technology is going to kill a lot of jobs, y'all. And you already know it if you haven't gone through it just yet. This is a crazy doggy dog world. The iceberg in the fast food sector. McDonald's and Kali Express have opened fully autonomous stores that operate without human staff because labor is one of the biggest costs for fast food players. Yum Brands has even developed a training app for employees. We've developed an internal mobile app called Super App that we've rolled out to over 9,000 restaurants across the world. And what it is, it's like having a digital coach in your pocket that helps our restaurant general managers identify areas that can continue to reduce costs of running a restaurant, coach team members and being able to do their job more efficiently and really providing an overall better experience for us to make sure that there aren't any waste in inventory. The company's full portfolio includes popular food chains like Pizza Hut, Taco Bell and KFC. And is hey, y'all don't sleep. Don't sleep. We're talking about Yum Brands, uh, a brand that was uh, started as a secondary corporate arm, I believe, uh, Pepsi. If I'm not mistaken, historically, I could be wrong. I, th I strongly think it's either Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Um, and they were, uh, uh, Young Brands was a, a very strong um, uh, separate corporate arm that was created to, to challenge in, in hopes of taking out McDonald's. But that's another video for another story that I'm going to cover. But um, don't sleep on Young Brands. They are wrapped in innovation they are totally like their their team who, whoever's on their the groups of teams that that uh think about the innovation the the technology and how to implement it to create a better customer experience and customer service 
telling you, bar none, they're like one of the best for a reason, y'all. Do not sleep on young brands. Crazy. It's heavily investing in automation. Its digital business is booming, with its digital sales accounting for 50% of sales in Q1 of 2024, a first for the company. We can test any concept in a market, partner with a large tech giant, and be able to test things like AI and Gen AI in, with their franchisees. And what our test results have shown is that when customers interact with their voice AI, we're at parity when it comes to accuracy, we're at parity when it comes to being able to understand what the customers want. And finally, customers are actually responding favorably, saying that the friendliness of the voice AI is in some cases exceeding that of a human. Woo! Where do you work to put finance nature on one platform? You're a rock star, Steve! Guys, can you keep me down? I'm working. Uh, commercial. Anyway, yeah, you're a rock star. Seventy-two percent of consumers actively use automated tech, like self checkout and contactless payment. According to research firm Software Advice, they found that although consumers appreciate the speed and efficiency of automation, they're still hesitant to embrace it everywhere. We can go in and make sure that a customer comes into the app and feels a personal touch where we know their name, we store their credit card information and make things easy to do. If we give them value through exclusive deals and promotions, unlock our loyalty and app, and we're able to really see them where they're at and be able to suggest things that they might enjoy, all this ends up being an experience that they come back for, and it's not just the food. We're in the try it and see phase of a lot of these AI technologies. Not only are companies testing new technologies, they're- Look, even better, y'all, I'm telling you that they're, they're, they've been testing this, this level of technology for over a decade now. They have just recently, you know, post-COVID starting to come out to the general public like, hey, this is what we're doing. This is the goals. This is how we are trying to save money and stuff like that. Look, I say, you know, this is 2024. I say about 2030, we will see a huge shift um, when it comes to, you know, working opportunities given to the general public. It's going to be cut so short. Uh, you're going to have to be a specialist. If you're not up on AI, if you're not up on, uh, you know, logistics, uh, stuff like that, stuff that matters. I mean, this again, y'all, this is going to be a crazy time. All of these companies are shifting gears to more automation, AI, logistics, uh, software, the this and the, the that's and I'm telling you, you need to stay ahead. Don't sleep. They're also testing customer reactions. This is why some retailers are pulling back on self-checkout aisles. Some customers have pushed back against that, which has meant that retailers have responded by reducing self-checkouts. With self-checkout, there are a lot more errors. People miss scanning things. People may be deliberately not paying for things and putting them in their bag. Let's and it costs deliberate. retailers a lot of money. And whilst they don't talk about theft a lot, it is one of the real reasons why people want to cut back on the use of self-checkout. But the other issue is that while self-checkout is liked by some people, it's absolutely hated by other people. It makes the customer do more of the work. The, the other people that this gentleman is mentioning is the baby boomers, the, the OGs, um, you know, people that's like 55, 50, let's go with 50 plus. Um, those are the people that's really giving out the pushback because a lot of the older uh, populace is not really on a cusp of how to maneuver with all of this technological advances. They're finding it a very hard time to break away from, oh, this is what we used to do when we were younger to this is how things are done now. Um, so they're, they're kind of like the, the old guard generation that is honestly getting left behind not on purpose but you know if you're not putting yourself in a position to learn these new technologies and how to work it then you're naturally going to be the ones that's going to fall off and unfortunately it's the old guard uh generation that's this is happening too so but we all know what time it is though
work. And some people just don't like that, especially in a grocery store where you've got a lot of stuff to bag and scan. And it's seen as a deterioration of the service. The reason why customers love Caper um, is because of everything extending from the screen. It transforms shopping for being almost this utilitarian thing, a chore. You go to the store as a chore to a shopping adventure. The tech isn't without challenges. The problem with smart carts is they're a very expensive and over-engineered technology. You think about the number of carts an average supermarket has. That is going to cost an absolute fortune for most mm -hmm. retailers to replace all those carts with smart carts. And it's not going to happen on scale. While wow, Didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that? I could have sworn I just said that. Look, a lot of these grocery stores, you got a handful of national level grocery stores that do have the finances to roll out with these specialized over the top tech carts um to to incorporate that technology i'm not sure if uh, amazon will license that technology uh to these other grocery stores at cost but look or these these other grocery stores could come up with their own variation but whatever it is the case um, there's going to be a very strong cost uh, derived from trying to create these type of carts with that much level of technology. So a lot of the mom and pop, the one, two local grocery stores, they're going to stay on par with what they are dealing with financially in terms of growth. Um, and they're not going to transfer into that level of new technology because simply they can't afford to. Uh, but nevertheless, you're going to see, again, that huge swift of uh, technological ch uh, changes um, from these type of carts and is going to get into other things. Like and if you go to the Amazon store, you don't even need the cart. You know, that's just an, a, a, a value add. You could honestly go put, you know, fill up your cart and still walk out the store uh, if that's what you want. And then they'll link your sales to your Amazon, uh, your personal Amazon cart because or Amazon account because you already have typically pre-stored your uh, your debit card, credit card number in there for purchases on Amazon.com. They use they'll tap into it and then take the payments out of your uh, preloaded card. All right. So, yeah, let's get back to it. Let's get back to it. Grocery Boom. retailers struggle with self-checkout. Fast food chains are placing more and more self-service kiosks in restaurants. When customers come in, they love the ability to customize. And as they have the ability to customize, we're finding that's also helping customers discover new products that we'd love for them to learn about. And it's also helping us see bigger ticket size when it comes to our franchisee unit economics. We've seen ranges go from 18% higher through the use of kiosks up to 30 in some of our markets. And we think this is a win-win for both our customers and for Yum. Retailers and fast food outlets can see the benefits, but some of the technology hasn't really proven itself. All right, look, I'm a, I was thinking about not doing this, but hey, elephant in the room, we're gonna jump on a very touchy subject. Uh, this is not my personal, <laughs> I don't want nobody to hit the black ball on me. This is not my personal uh, feeling towards the situation. This is just the situation, black and white. And the core reasoning for all of these restaurant chains doing this, the whole automation, AI, this and that, the carts, the, you know, uh, you dealing with machines more than humans. So obviously, it all started when uh, these group of uh, adults have, you know, teamed up against McDonald's and starting to state their case. I'm not going to say complain, but state their case rather um, that, again, they're not getting paid livable wage. But we can look at it from this standpoint. When you're looking at, uh, you know, these fast food restaurants, it was never set for an adult to try to live off of those wages honestly and i remember when i was super young long time ago um everybody everybody you know that just you know 16 17 whatever 
uh, had to work. And the places we worked in was fast. KFC, McDonald's, Burger King, whatever your vice is. That system is made for high school kids looking to enter into the workforce for their first time. It wasn't made. It was never made for adults, you know, 25, 30, 40, 50 years old uh, to work and actually have an actual livable wage with benefits in the history of restaurants, you know, even fine dining. You know, most of the time you you go in, there is really no relevant benefits. And and I don't know when was the change of people's mental thoughts with this process, uh, asking for, you know, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars an hour, where honestly. Actual chefs, I'm talking about real chefs some of which probably went to culinary school, some went through the apprenticeship route, but I'm talking about legit, real chefs. You know, they get $15, $20 an hour as a base, and then they got to work themselves up. Uh, so when you have people that, you know, push a button, then, a, then a, this hot top comes down on the burgers and then lifts up when it's done and you push a button for the fries and the fry, like all of this stuff, uh, you know, it's, it's honestly compared to a real chef is brainless work. Um, you just push your buttons doing all of this stuff and then you pull in the food, you put it together and you serve it. Look, again, I'm being uh, very partial with this, but let's keep it real. Working at McDonald's, Duck and Donuts, Wendy's, Five Guys has never been a place for adults with families and having to pay rent or a mortgage. Now, if you were like the assistant manager or the restaurant manager, then that's totally different. That's totally different. But I'm talking about getting in on the ground level where you're just called crew member obviously not right so you know that's the elephant in the room y'all but this is why the industry has changed to to ai and automation there are glitches there are things that retailers need to look at and to iron out self-checkout is struggling at grocers self-service is booming for fast food AI tech and shopping carts is being well received, but AI and drive through faces many hurdles. So where does technology go from here? We remain confident that uh... just because Workday makes you great at finance and HR does not make you a rock star. Tim, you are a rock star. Excuse me, uh, Tim, do you have a platinum record? Um, technically, no. I got a platinum channel. Um, as we take a look at pricing across our brands and our Excuse markets, um, yeah. we'll continue to partner and find ways to make sure we can address cost pressures and give customers the value they expect and know that the Omnance brands will do. In the future, you can imagine um, things like uh, the Ask Instacart uh, capability, where you could ask Instacart to budget you a full meal plan for the week. And you could imagine asking it to abide by certain dietary preferences that you have. And then as you get to the store, you can take that and sink it to the cart and then chop it, chop it really seamlessly. As automation grows, so do the concerns around job losses. The Bureau of Labor Statistics forecasts a 2% drop in total retail jobs from 2022 to 2032. Still, the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts that the industry will need more than 500,000 new workers each year to account for turnover. In the fast food industry alone, the Bureau of Labor Statistics predicts job openings will grow by 2% with 1 million new workers needed each year from 2022 to 2032. It's not like automation has replaced all of these jobs. I think the worry is that over time, it will replace more of these jobs it will. and it will lead to it becoming a lot more difficult for folks to get these entry level positions. We're not quite at that stage yet, but we are in danger of going there at some point in the future. And a decision has to be taken as to how we deal with that. 
Now, it's possible that grocery chains and other retailers will create other roles. There could be customer service facing roles, more, more associates wandering the aisles to help customers. Let's keep it real on this. There will be other roles uh, created. Um, look, and it's all going to be based around do you know how to fix these machines when it go down? So, you know, you got to have a certain engineer background, IT background, um, stuff like that. Do you know AI? Like you got to you got to have something techy uh, that's going to keep you afloat for front of the house. Now, back of the house, uh, you know, there's degrees out there that you could get where it's, uh, you know, supply uh, logistics type degrees. Uh, those people that go to college or university for the supply and logistics uh, bachelor's degree. Uh, AI is a new uh, college degree uh, that you could take. Uh, obviously, software development, IT, stuff like that. Those are the routes that you want to go if you wish to stay ahead uh, You know, from the, the technological advances, uh, if that's the industry that you want to get into. But that's the stuff that is going to be really needed. So gone are the will be the days where you need 10, 15 people out front. They're going to have the machines out front, fire all 10, 15 people and just hire one engineer or one tech that could go out to the front and repair those machines to get them back in line. I'm telling y'all, watch some as fine things. So we could see these roles replaced with different types of positions, but the danger is that some of these traditional positions might disappear because ultimately retailers do want to reduce costs and automation gives them a way to do that. What we do believe is that technology can play a really big role in empowering our team members to spend more time on valuable activities like spending time with the customer. And technology can help in areas that uh, our customers really value. Uh, things like improving order accuracy, reducing the wait time, uh, increasing the speed at drive through We see a lot of upside over the next several years with AI and technology being able to enhance customer experience while making the team member's job a lot easier. That longer term vision we have that on a five to 10 year horizon, customers shouldn't have to choose between shopping online and in store. It'll be one single personalized mode, all powered by Instagram. While food prices do remain an important part of a customer's decision, uh, we believe that the experience that they have digitally is going to be a key differentiator. Uh, today, customers want more than just a meal. They're looking for personalized, easy, frictionless experiences. And for us, that's where we're investing so heavily into things like AI, self-service kiosks, drive-through, and other things that can help automate a lot of the work that goes on. Y'all see it. This is the world. So instead of getting angry at the situations that's happening, you should take that same energy and just align yourself with what is going to be needed in the future. Uh, I would highly suggest it would behoove you to not waste no time. If you already know that this is the way that we are going as a society, try to get ahead of that power curve, beat that thing, get there first and get, get, I'm telling you, get yourself in line. You don't want to be the people that's blowing off a lot of time and then you're going to get left behind y'all. Thank you for all of your, your time. And I'll see you all on the, the next video. Chef Prime out.